Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome again to Wednesday Night Dinner. Glad you guys decided to join us tonight for dinner as we feast on the Word of God. It's good to be able to come to you, especially those that are on the conference call, those that are on Facebook Live, those that may be joining us on YouTube. It's good to have you guys to be with us in our Bible study. Uh, on this week. You know, it's just good to be able to study the Bible. It's good to be able to study the Bible together. And that's what I like about uh, coming together. It's not so much to have to have it through these means, but at least we can still study God's Word together. And I'm going to invite you tonight to be turning to the book of 2 Corinthians. Okay? 2 Corinthians. That's where we are going to uh, be studying uh, from on tonight. But before we get started tonight, we do want to remember uh, all of those that are in the path of Hurricane Milton. Father, we know that uh, they are, it's about ready to hit shore and all the people that is in the path of this. So we definitely want to pray for them uh, that there be no loss of lives tonight uh, and that storm come through. And also storm uh, Helena that have just uh, happened last week. We just want to continue to pray. So if you guys don't mind, join me as we pray right now for all of those individuals. Father, we just want to come right now asking that you would bless all of those that are in the path of Hurricane Milton. Father, we pray that there will be no loss of lives. We pray, Father, that all of the destruction will be material things and not physical. Father, we pray for those that probably will lose everything in this storm, mm -hmm. like the last storm. Father, we pray that uh, as Christian, we'll be a source of encouragement and help in any way we can. Father, we just pray for those that have lost, that have left uh, their homes and travel uh, out of the path. Father, we pray you give them traveling grace uh, as they arrive back home. Again, Father, we thank you. We thank you for watching over them and protecting them and taking care of all of those that are in this path. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, everyone. Tonight, we definitely want to look at Christ in 2 Corinthians. Now, we, we went through 1 Corinthians last week. We, we just kind of looked at scriptures uh, that Paul makes mention of Christ in. And you remember I told you that you would probably find uh, Christ in more scriptures that Paul makes mention of in the book of 1 Corinthians than any book uh, in the Bible. Uh, 2 Corinthians is going to run close, but not as many as 1 Corinthians. So we are actually going to look at 2 Corinthians. Now, keep in mind, as I said last week and the week before, this is not a Bible study of 2 Corinthians. Uh, it is just a time for us to flip through the pages and just see how often Paul makes mention of Christ in this book. Hopefully, eventually, the day will come that we can go back and take it verse by verse, chapter by chapter, and we can really dissect it and, and exegete these passages and pull it out of these passages, what the author wants us to get. Uh, I hope that they come that we can do that. Now, we have done that several years ago uh, there at, at Bird Street, because I remember we did it, uh, First Corinthians, because I talked about uh, the problem, uh, the cause, the problem, and the solution uh, in every chapter in First Corinthians. So we, we have been over uh, the book of First Corinthians, but I don't know if we have ever really studied Second Corinthians. So maybe the day will come that we can actually spend more time in Second Corinthians. Now, again, like I said, we just going to go through the book. Flip the pages. Get used to uh, this book. Uh, get an overall view of what Paul is dealing with 
uh, in 2 Corinthians. Now, as we approach the book of 2 Corinthians, now it's a little different uh, than 1 uh, Corinthians. Remember 1 Corinthians? Paul dealt with just about every problem that they had. Matter of fact, they had gotten word from the house of Chloe uh, that there was all these problems in the church. And, and we looked at every problem in every chapter. But 2 Corinthians is not going to be so much as dealing with the problems in the church as Paul is going to deal with uh, trying to help the church understand who he is. And that's what we're going to be looking at tonight. So let me just kind of give you an introduction uh, of the book of 2 Corinthians. Now, the book of 2 Corinthians is a deeply personal letter that reveals the difficult realities of ministry life. Now, we are going to see this as we go through this book. It's basically about Paul. And Paul is going to tell you a lot about himself. Matter of fact, if you want to call 2 Corinthians an autobiography of Paul, you would probably be right. Because he's going to talk about himself and explain himself quite often uh, through uh, this book. Now, the central theme of 2 Corinthians is the relationship between suffering and the power of the Spirit in Paul's uh, apostolic life, also in his ministry and in the message. Now, that's what we're going to find, we're going to see in the book of 2 Corinthians, the relationship between the suffering and the Spirit. Now, remember, there were those false apostles that had come into the church at Corinth, after Paul had left, and they were trying to change uh, the Corinthians' mind about Paul. And remember, Paul said, you are my work yes, in sir. the gospel. Yes, sir. So, so they comes in, and they're going to try to uh, change the folk mind of, about Paul. Chain them so they would not be against Paul. And these false apostles had all these things they were saying, right? Now, he cannot be a real apostle. Look how he's suffering. A real apostle would not suffer like Paul is suffering. So that lets you know he cannot be a real apostle. Paul is going to defend that. Notice how many times we go through this book. Paul want to talk about his suffering. You're going to talk about the things he go through. But in reality, he's going to say, the reason why I went through what I went through was because of the gospel's sake. It was because of my relationship mm -hmm. with Christ. Totally opposite of what the false apostles are, were saying. Now, Paul's message to the Corinthians encouraged them to live in a new way, embracing a cruciform life of Jesus. Second Corinthians is a letter about living a totally countercultural way as we seek to live like Jesus did. And that's what we're going to find in uh, this book of 2 uh, Corinthians. So when we start off, we're just going to hit some of the scriptures, just like we did last week, that mentions Christ. Now keep in mind, this book, if I had to put a title to the book of 2 Corinthians, it would probably be a therapy for the hurting. Therapy for the hurting. This, this book is a book that consoles us. It, it comforts us. Matter of fact, when you first start the book in 2 Corinthians 1, especially verses 1 through 3, Paul's going to talk about God being a God of comfort. So he's going to say that we can be comforted by God. So if you're in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 
let's let's begin. Verse one, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Notice he said he's by the will of God. And Timothy, our brother unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, with all the saints which are in Achaia. I think my phone died, didn't it? Yes, you got to call back in. Okay, you guys on Facebook, hold on a second. I think my conference call died out. I am going to re-dial uh, this number. Hopefully it'll come back on. And I won't lose anybody. Now you guys stay right there. Thank you for choosing free okay. conferencecall.com. You are helping people around the world communicate for free. Please If you are the host, press star now. Otherwise, please enter your pin followed by... Thank you. There are eight participants in the conference. Okay, my conference call group, y'all still there? All participants are muted, and they can. All participants are unmuted. Is my conference call group still with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think my phone cut out on you. I think we redialed it. So I'm going to mute you guys again. All participants are muted. Okay. Mute themselves. All right. Technology, technology, technology. What do you do when technology <laughs> fails? You just flow with the punches. <laughs> That's all you do. So I hope you guys on Facebook still there. Uh, I can't fix you all, but I can fix the phone call. Okay. Now, verse one, Paul said, I'm an apostle of Jesus Christ. Yes. Now, why would he start this letter off saying that? It's evidently because the word that got back to Paul from Titus, remember, he had sent Titus down to Corinth, and we learned all of this back in the book of Acts, uh, chapters 18, 19, and 20. But when Titus comes back, Titus brings word back to Paul, and he tells Paul, he said, now, Paul, uh, I know we, you dealt with some of the problems when you wrote that first letter. But Paul, let me tell you, there are still some problems in the church. Amen. And it's not, may not be so much the problem with the members as it is with other folks that have came into the church. So Paul, Titus tells Paul this, he gives him this information, and Paul now has to write another letter. Now, Paul had visited them because, see, they had this idea that Paul says one thing in his letters, but when he's in person, he's a totally different person. So Paul have to write this letter. Again, we're going to find out that Paul going to later on say, when we get over in chapter 2, I believe, and he's going to say that, you know, I hated to write such a heavy, weighty letter to you guys. But you all need to be corrected because they say I'm not an apostle of Jesus Christ because uh, I, I, I suffer so much and I will not take money from the church uh, at Corinth and I'm weak when I'm in person and I'm bold when I'm writing. So therefore, this guy can't be no apostle. So Paul starts this letter off by saying, hey, it's me, Paul. I'm writing this, and guess what? I am an apostle of Jesus Christ. And guess what? I didn't make myself an apostle Amen. of Jesus Christ. Amen. I am an apostle by the will of God. Amen. Now, let me ask you all, are those other guys that are there in the church at Corinth that's claiming to be apostles? Are they apostles by the will of God? Quite naturally not. He said, and Timothy, our brother, he write this unto the church with all the saints which are in uh, Achaia. Now, Achaia was the providence which the Corinth, the city was located in. Several churches were there in Achaia besides Corinth. And Paul said, I'm writing this to all the saints. 
So we see he made mention of Jesus Christ in verse 1. But if you look at verse number 2, he said, Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. And then you look at verse 3. He said, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. So again, he keeps mentioning about Jesus. He keeps emphasizing Jesus Christ as he writes this letter. My fact in verse number five, he said, for as the suffering of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounds through Christ. Paul simply saying, just like we suffer, Christ suffer, we suffer. We suffer in Christ, Christ suffer in us. We, we are in this thing together. So he makes mention of the suffering of Christ. Then he drops down to verse 19. And still in chapter 1. Verse 19 says, For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, even by me and Silvanus and Timothy, was not ye and yea or nay, but in him, yea. Paul says, now, we preach Christ unto you. Not only did I do it, but Sylvanius did it. He says, Timothy did it. Titus did it. My fact, we also learn in 1 Rhythm that Apollos uh, was there in Corinth. He preached Christ unto them. And he says, in Christ, in him, it is yea. Yeah, we preach Christ unto you. Why do you guys still have such a problem? The problem was not the gospel that Paul preached. The problem was the false apostle that was saying he was not a true apostle. Now drop down to verse 21. A couple of verses. He said, now he which establish us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God. Can you see Paul still defending himself? He defending his credibility among the, the Corinthians. He shouldn't have to do this. He had been with them for 18 months he preached to them over and over and over. He had only been gone for about a year or a little bit over a year. And from the time he was there to the time he left a year later, seemed like some of them was making a 180 degree turn from what Paul had taught them. So he reminded them again that he was establish you, strengthen you in Christ. He said, we was anointed yes. by him. We are the one that taught you. Why do you have, or why are you second guessing us uh, now? So let's move on to chapter two. Now in chapter two, let's begin at verse 10. He said, to whom you forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything, to whom I forgave it, for your sakes, forgave it, I it in the person of Jesus Christ. Now again, when you look at these verses that I just pick out, I know I'm not dealing with the context of the verse. And it's hard to explain the verse without looking at the context of the verse. But again, I just want to show you Christ, okay? When we come back and study uh, the book of 2 Corinthians, we'll see why Paul is saying what he's saying and who it is he forgave and who it is that he's talking about that he, that he forgave. We'll find out that person who it is. But right now, we're just going to move on to verse number 12. He said, furthermore, when I came to Taurus to preach 
Christ's gospel, and a door was opened unto me of the Lord. Paul says, as I travel, now keep in mind, Paul is writing this epistle, the second Corinthians, from Macedonia. Okay? Now the first one, Corinthians, he was writing it from Ephesus. So here, he's in a different place. First time, second missionary journey. This time, he's on a third missionary journey. And he's at different locations as he traveled and preached the gospel. He says in this verse, when I came to Taurus to preach Christ's gospel, he said there was a door open for me. Amen. And what was that door? Come over Amen. into Macedonia and help us. So Paul, sometimes doors was open, sometimes doors were shut. It was all by the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Paul was guided by the Holy Spirit. He followed the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit was saying, nope, you don't need to go there. Amen. He didn't go. But when the Holy Spirit said, you need to go over there, he went. Oh, ain't that a lesson for us today? Mm. Ain't it a lesson for you and I if we would just learn to do what Paul did? Because sometimes doors close. The Holy Spirit will close a door. But we are determined. We're going to open that door and walk right on in. All right now. And you do that, it could be detrimental. Because God is always looking out for the best of us. Sometimes we think we know more than God. And then there are other times, instead of God uh, opening the door, shutting the door, sometimes God will open the door. But when God opened the door, he opened the door because he's looking out for the betterment of us. But we may not want to walk through that door. Because see, in our mind, we thinking, I'd rather go through that door. I don't want that door. And sometimes we treat our lives like, like on the prices right. I think is that the game where they have the different doors that they can pick? You know, we say, I, I'm gonna pick door one, or I'm gonna pick door two. Let's make uh, a deal. Let's make a deal. That's what I'm looking for. Uh let's make a deal. You know, I want door one or door two or door three. They have the choice to pick any door they want, but they have to. Be satisfied with whatever's behind that door. Well, see, in life, when you're following God and you follow that direction of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is going to open up the right, right door for you. You may not think it's the right door, but it is the right door. You may be saying to yourself, I don't see how this is going to benefit me. Well, just stay where you are. Sometimes we need to just be still. And let me throw this in. Sometimes that open door may not be for you at all. It may be about somebody else. God may open a door for you, not for your benefit, but for the benefit of somebody else. But what we have to do is just trust God. If it's for me, thank you. If it's for somebody else, thank you. So we just have to learn to walk through the door that God opened. And here, Paul said, there was a door that was opened unto me of the Lord. He had such a relationship with the Lord. He knew that it was God that opened that door. Now, drop down to verse 14. He said, now, thanks be to God, which always causes us to trump in Christ. And make it manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. Paul said, I just want to thank God. Why do you want to thank God, Paul? Because he always causes us ah, to triumph come on, in Christ. In Christ. Yeah, I just believe that. I just mm, trust in him. Come on. And I just want to accept the fact that I'm going to. I'm going to triumph in Christ, so therefore I'm just going to thank him. Notice the tense of the verb. Paul says, I always thank him. Why? Because he keeps on causing us to triumph in Christ. In other words, Paul thanking him in advance. 
I just want to thank God in advance for what he's going to do in my life tomorrow. If that is tomorrow. Or next week. Or next month. Why? Because I realize he's going to always cause us to triumph in Christ. Now, you have to be in Christ. That's what Paul was saying. Notice the very next verse, verse 15. He said, for we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish. Paul said, we are unto God a sweet savor of God, of Christ. Now, drop down to verse 17. He says, for we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. Now again, unless you know what was happening and the background of, 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 of why Paul writes this letter, you may miss verse 17. But now that we have looked at some of the historical background of the church and what was going on at that time and what Titus told Paul, now you can understand why Paul said what he said in verse 17. Mm -hmm. He said, for we are not as many that corrupt the word of God. Now, who is he? who corrupts the word of God? Amen. See, you got to know there were some false teachers. There were some folk that was teaching things that were false. And they was error. False apostles, he calls them. He said, now, we not in that group. We in the group that preach Christ, but we preach him out of sincerity. We are serious about it, what we see, what we teach. But as of God, in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. Everything we say, everything we do is in Christ. Okay, let's move on to chapter 3. Flip your page. Flip over to chapter 3. For as much as you are manifestly clear to be an apostle, I'm in verse 3, be an epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of of the living God. Yes, sir. Not in tables of stone. Come on. But in fleshly tables of the heart. Notice Paul said, Paul says that that the epistle of Christ is ministered by us. Now he says, now you all are my epistle in Christ. Not written, he said, with ink. It's not written on stone. It's not written on parchment paper. Not written uh, in a tablet. He said, no, but it is written of the living, uh, of the spirit of the living God. It is written where? In your heart. So Paul, again, carrying them back. Remember, guys. Two years ago, remember three years ago when I was there and what I told you, what I taught you. Don't you remember that? Your hearts were changed. It was not so much of what I wrote then, but what I spoke then. And it was by the Spirit of God. And you guys accepted it. Your life changed. Your heart changed. Amen. Then he said to the very next verse, and such trust have we through Christ to God. We just, we just want to trust Christ yes. in all of this. Yes. Verse 14, but their minds were blinded. Mm. For until this day remained the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament. Which veil is done away with in Christ? Yeah. Paul says, these guys' minds are blinded. Yes. How are they blinded? They blinded mm. because they will not accept the truth. Yes. See, when you're still trying to follow the Old Testament and the Old Law, and it was evident by Paul making mention of this, 
that it's evident that they still trying to bring in some of that old stuff. Yeah. I understand it now. You are the grace and the truth. So maybe Paul is trying to talk to some of those Jews that was yes. evil, trying to hold on to the yes. old law. And it could be those false apostles was teaching them he can't be a real apostle. He's not even keeping the law. Maybe yes. that's what they were saying. Yes. So Paul writes them and said, guess what? When you find someone that's still trying to hold on to the old law, their minds have been blinded. Yes. And it's like a veil that is over their face. And that veil remain over there for as long as they stay in the old law and tell you, you got to obey the old law. That you, you yourself will be under the veil. Yes. But he said, if you want the veil removed. Come on. He says, you got to obey Christ. Amen. You got to follow Christ. And that's what I taught you all. When I was in Corinth, I taught you Christ. But now you didn't pull the veil back over your face. But notice verse 16. He said, nevertheless, when you shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Nevertheless, when you shall turn to the Lord, the veil will be taken away. Accept Jesus. Accept Christ. Watch and see what happens to the veil. For in the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. In other words, there's freedom. Remember, we talked about that freedom back in 1 Corinthians chapter 8. Don't take that freedom too far. But it's evident they were putting them back under bondage. Yes. They were telling them about the old law. And when you try to keep the old law, you go back under bondage. Paul said, no. He said, now the Lord is that spirit that he just talked about in the previous verse. And where the spirit of the Lord is, yeah. you no longer under no bondage. You are free. Don't Believe those false apostles. Verse 18. But we all with open face. Come on. Beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord. We are changed into the same image from glory to glory. Even as by the spirit of the Lord. Oh, we still had time to really jump into that verse. Because Paul says, when you accept the Lord, yes. you are changed, changed. from the mm. same into the same image from glory, glory to glory. To glory. You, you're not under the law. Stop believing those false teachers and those false of prophets, apostles. Stop believing them. Accept the fact that you are in Christ. And you are being changed from glory to glory. Let's move on into chapter 4. Probably ain't going to get through all 13 chapters, but we'll just look at chapter 4. He said in verse number 4, 4-4, four, four, In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God should shine unto them. Guess who blinds the mind and yes. the eyes yes. of individuals? He said it is the God of mm. this world. You do know there is a God of this world. Now, look at that little G. We're not talking about the big G. There is a little G God. Mm -hmm. And that God is the God of this world. And guess what he'll do? He'll blind the minds of them that will not accept Christ. Because, see, if you believe and accept Christ, he said the light of the glorious gospel is going to change you. It's going to shine in you. But it's evident there was some that was not letting that light shine. Look at verse 5. For we preach not ourselves. 
but Christ Jesus the Lord. And ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. Paul said, we preach Christ. We don't preach ourselves. Yes. It's evident again. Yes. All you got to do is follow Paul's train of thought. Listen to what he's saying. If you listen to what Paul says, you can come to the conclusion of why he says this. So when he said, we preach not ourselves. Evidently, there were some that were preaching themselves. They were just trying to make, make themselves look good. Come on. Telling the folk, no, you need to stop believing Paul. You need to stop believing Timothy. Stop believing Titus. Stop believing Sylvanius. Stop believing Apollos. Stop believing all these other guys that have been down here and told you all about Christ. No, no, no. Y'all need to believe what we say. And guess what they was preaching? Not Christ, mm. but themselves. So Paul writes them and says, hey, listen, God, we came to Corinth. We preached Christ. We didn't preach ourselves. It was not about us, but we preached Christ. And notice the last part of that verse. I'm in verse 5. He said, and ourselves, your servants, for Christ's sake. Paul said, we didn't preach ourselves. We preached Christ. And we preach ourselves as servants. Yes. For Christ's sake. Yes. It wasn't about us. Yes. It was for Christ. Say, we were servants for Christ's sake, not for our own. Notice verse 6. He said, For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, have shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. In the face of Jesus Christ. Everything Paul says. He says to remind the church at Corinth. Exactly who he was. And why they said what they said. So we see it. Paul continued to try to defend. His credibility as a true apostle. Notice verse number 10. He said, always a bar barren about in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our bodies. Come on, it's Paul said, guys, mm. why do you think I go through such suffering? Barren. Why do you think I mm. carry, I bear all of the marks? The and we'll find them out when we get over into chapter 11. But Paul said, now, why do you think I keep bearing all of this stuff? Matter of fact, I carry the dying oh, of Jesus Christ in my every day mm. in my body. Yes. Why would I do that? Yes. Why? Again, I think you would ask the question. Those Corinthians, do you guys understand? I want you to compare us to those other guys. Are they bearing about in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ? Are they making Jesus Christ, the light of Jesus Christ, manifest in their body? Are they making it known in their bodies? No, no, no. Because it ain't about Jesus Christ. It's about them. And Paul said the difference between us and them, he said we are always, always bearing about the, in the body the dying, the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. Always, always that the life yes. also of Jesus yes. might be made manifest, manifest or known in, or shown in, in our, body. our body. Yes. So Paul says, just look. Yes. Observe what we go through. And he's going to go through a whole lot. And Paul is going to continue to talk about the things that he's going to go through in his body. But notice the very next verse. Yes. Verse 11. He said, for we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus. Say, he just say. That the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal body. Yes. He said, for we which live are always delivered unto death. Always. Ah. And you live for Christ. Huh. Paul says it's going to always Wait. be about you living in, for him 
And you're going to be delivered unto death. Yes. And Paul didn't Paul. All we got to do is go back and read the book of Acts. You find out that Paul, uh, they was after him all the time. Delivered. Huh? They were delivered unto death. We get over it again later on in this book. Second yes. He's going to talk about all the things he went through. Matter of fact, one on one, t one occasion, we get over to chapter 12. Paul will say, oh, I, I got to the point where I just couldn't take that thorn no more. And I just asked the Lord, I don't know mm. what it was. It was in his flesh, something. And he said, I, I asked the Lord three times, Lord, remove it. Didn't do it. Lord, remove it. Nope, mm. I ain't going to do it. Lord, remove it. I, nope, I ain't going to do it. And he did it for three times. But then he finally decided, you know, I'm going to live with this. Because now I understand. God's oh, grace. I hate to jump ahead of myself. Grace. But now I understand that because of grace that, that the, I'm going to be made strong in my, in my weakness. So I understand. But Paul says here, always. Notice the verse before that. He uses always. Again, he said always delivered unto death. It ain't a, it's not a matter of convenience here. It's not a matter of whether or not I want you today, but not tomorrow. Yes. Paul said, no, always delivered unto death that the life of Jesus might be made known in my mortal body. When you saw Paul, you saw Jesus. Yes, sir. That's why Paul would say, be ye followers of me. Yes, I follow. As I follow Christ. Because Paul says, Christ, it is Christ who lives mm. within me. And everything he did, he did because of Christ that was in him. Well, let's look at verse 14. We are in in chapter 4. We'll pick up Lord's will in chapter 5 next time. Paul said in verse 14 of chapter 4, he said, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise us up also by Jesus and shall present us with you. Again, Paul is trying to get these Corinthians to see. I want you to know that he which raised up Jesus is going to also raise us up also by Jesus. The day is going to come that as we talked about in chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians, when we dealt with that resurrection, Again, Paul is reminding them in this second letter that the resurrection is going to take place. We're going to say, knowing that he which raised up Jesus Come on. shall also raise us up also by Jesus. He raised up Jesus from the dead after that third day. God raised him up. The day is going to come when Jesus is going to return. The trumpet is going to sound. Clouds roll back in the scroll. And guess what? We are going to be raised by Jesus, raised with him. And he said, and shall present us with, with you. you. You're going to be raised as well. Yes. This is what he's saying. Yes. Guys, listen to us, Paul said. Not these false guys. Now, he's going to continue mm. as we continue to go through the book of 2 Corinthians, okay? So let's end right there. My time is expired. Let's pick up with chapter 5, Lord's Will, yes, next week. Yes. And we'll look at other verses that Paul is going to make mention of the Lord or mm. make mention of Christ, you know, throughout this book. But remember, 2 Corinthians is a great book. If you want a book for counseling and helping other folk, that may be struggling or may be suffering or may be hurting, read 2 Corinthians because you're going to pick out so many good points that Paul uses to help the church at Corinth to understand where they were and what they need to be doing. So I like to look at it, 2 Corinthians, as a great counseling book. Okay, guys, thank you all. Remember, I Probably the hurricane is either close and can't see no news right now, but it's probably getting ready to hit uh, the western coast of Florida and a lot of people. And I know everybody did not leave 
Some are going to try to ride it out. We're going to pray for those as we did earlier. Can't pray too much for those individuals. Join me again in prayer. Father, we thank you again. We thank you for the lesson tonight. We thank you for the book of 2 Corinthians. We thank you, Father, not only how it helped the church at Corinth, but how we can take nuggets from it to help us in 2024. Amen. How do we come right now again on behalf of all of those that in the state of Florida that's in the path of this hurricane that's about to hit or have already hit land. Father, we pray that there will be no loss of lives. Father, we pray that it move, that it'll move on across and go on out into the ocean. And Father, when the sun comes up tomorrow, Father, we pray that everybody that is alive today will be alive on tomorrow. Amen. Help them to understand mm. that material things can be replaced, mm. but not lives. Bless them, Lord. We Bless pray them. for them. And we ask it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Good night, guys. Have a good night.